on Lucamus Prime here, so it's time for another the, um, the Hobbit review today, and today as part of my talking adaptation reviews, today I'm going to be reviewing the second instalment of a movie trilogy directed by Peter Jackson, based on the book of the same name by J.R.R. Tolkien, which is called The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smog. So, now this movie, and um, the second instalment of a trilogy, um... A lot of people reckon this is the best installment of the Hobbit trilogy, but for me, um, I would not agree and say that, um, you know, the first Hobbit movie, Unexpected Journey, is the best one of the trilogy. Now, for those of you wondering, this is my personal opinion on the movie, guys, okay? So, if you guys don't like this movie or you do like it, that's totally fine. But yeah, please um, respect my opinion just like I respect yours. Alright, so, so my opinion on this movie is that... Um, I think it's it's good. It's a good movie. It's, it's very enjoyable to watch, but I do have some issues with which, which is why I prefer the first Hobbit movie over over this one. And um, so, so what I like about this, so this movie takes place, of course, um, shortly after an unexpected journey finished, and it continues the story of the Hobbit. Um, because, as you may be aware, the Hobbit is is not a free part, but like Lord of the Rings was. This film focuses on like the second, third. Of the book basically and yeah now the going about this movie you know once again i think the entire cast is once again brilliant in their roles for example once again i did love martin freeman as billboard baggins i thought he was brilliant as the younger version of him really good and of course i really once again loved sir ian mckellen as gandalf in this you know he's my favorite middle of character and ian mckellen always does a spectacular job playing him in all the films he's in um, once again, I enjoyed Richard Armitage as Foreign Orkin Shield. He did a very good job bringing Foreign to life as well. And just like as well with the previous movie, I did love the cast of the dwarves. I thought I thought they were perfect in this movie, just like how they were in the first one. They were perfectly cast for their roles. Really good. And it, when it comes to introducing new characters, um, I loved we, how we got introduced to um, Bard the Bowman, played by Luke Evans. He did a very good job in Bard in this movie, and of course, the third one afterwards. And I do like as well how um, we, we finally got a proper introduction to Thranduil, you know, the, the elven king of, of uh, Mirkwood, the woodland realm. Um, and he was he was very good in the role, even though, to be honest, I kind of like him as well as Ronan the Accuser in the MCU. It's hard to say which role is better for him, really. Um, but then again, more guys... Um, my favourite, you know, character introduction in this movie has to definitely go to Smog himself because, you know, played by Benedict Cumberbatch. You know, Benedict Cumberbatch did an absolutely spectacular job with, with the voice, with his voice and motion capture. He was spectacular. He really was in the role. It's like the entire, you know, screen time of Smog in this movie was absolutely breathtaking. Like, his performance was nailed perfectly. Like, easily probably the best part of the movie was definitely Smog. And not to mention, guys, Benedict Cumberbatch, of course, also played the mysterious Necromancer as well in Dor Gul Dor, um, who is, of course, later revealed to be the Dark Lord Sauron. Um, now, as well as that, um, one thing I do like about this movie is that unlike the god-awful, in my opinion, 1977 animated Hobbit movie, it introduces characters from, from the book who weren't in the 1977 movie because for some reason they got cut out. For example, I love how at the start of the film we get in introduced to Beyond the Skin Changer, played by uh, Mikhail Persbrand. Um, I'm really glad that he made an appearance and, and the, the, the company of dwarves and Bilbo and Gandalf got to rest at his house. I'm really glad they included that. And there is also one character that I realised was not in the 1977 movie when I re-watched The Desolation of Smog in preparation for this review, and that's the Master of Lake Town because he was cut out of the 1977 movie. But luckily, he made his appearance in this play by Stephen Fry, one of my favourite comedians. He's really funny. Um, I'm very glad that he was in the, in the film, yeah. Um, now, there is also certain aspects of the movie that I want to, you know, defend. For example, I want to defend the appearance of Legolas because, yes, I do know that he's not in the book. But, to be honest, I actually don't mind him being in the movie because... You guys got to bear in mind that if you've seen the Lord of the Rings trilogy, you'll be aware that Aragorn mentions that Legolas... Is part of the woodland realm. So basically, you know, it makes sense for him to appear alongside the woodland elves when they capture the dwarves. So, so yeah, that's why, you know, I'm going to defend his presence because it doesn't really matter 
because he's part of Woodland Realm. And not to mention, but Legolas' role in the movie doesn't even affect the story at all from the book. He doesn't affect the story, so, like, um, it's not much of a problem, is it, really, if he's going to be in the movie? Because, you know, the events of the book still happen, you know, and, you know, and once again, Orlando Bloom was great in the role of Legolas, perfect for a role. Really was brilliant. And now with regards to another character that was created specifically for this movie, which is Toriel, played by Evangeline Lilly, um, <clears throat> yeah, I didn't really, you know, you know, Toriel is not in the book, so, um, I wasn't really a big fan of her, to be honest, um, and she was created for this movie. Um, even though Evangeline Lilly's performance was great, um, one thing I thought was pretty unnecessary was probably her romance with Killy, because, uh, you know, like, I don't really think it worked very well, to be honest, but, like, they should have developed it more, and, um, not only that, but, you know... But we didn't really seem to be getting on very well when we first met either, you know what I mean? So, hmm. But, nonetheless, Evangeline Johnny Lily was great in the role. In the role, to be honest, I kind of like her more as the Wasp in the MCU, to be honest. Like, I thought she was, she's great in that role and slightly better than Toriel. Um, but, yeah. I just feel like, you know, Toriel, it's like if you could erase Toriel from this movie, you know, it wouldn't really affect the plot, would it really? But still, I think Imagine Lily was a great addition because she's a great actress. Um, now, there's also one thing I will say that I'm really glad that this movie did compare to an I Say movie is I'm very glad that they did not make the Wood Elves like they did in an animated movie where they looked green and ugly and like goblins because, you know, like I said in my review, that ruins, you know, what Tolkien's idea was for the elves to make them look beautiful because, you know, and people are defending the Night Set movie saying that, you know, saying that, you know, the difference in the appearance to Elrond was done to distinguish them from Elrond. But, you know, you could at least make them wear different clothes, but, but make them still look beautiful. Like, come on. So so that's why I very much prefer the elves in this movie over the animated movie, most definitely, because it follows Tolkien's vision, which I'm happy about. Um, and once again as well, um, another thing as well, positive mention I've got to mention is that... Um, I am glad that this, that this movie included more of a necromancer subplot. I'm very happy about that. Like, um, because I, I was really disappointed that they cut out from the animated movie. And, but in this movie, it's in its full glory. We, and we finally get to see what Gandalf was up to when he, when he left the dwarves and Bilbo and Mirkwood. Um, and he meets Radagast the Brown um, yeah, at the High Fells, where they discover that the Nazgul tombs are empty. And then they go to Dol Guldor to investigate it. And then, of course... Um, Gandalf has one of my favourite moments in the entire trilogy was definitely Gandalf's confrontation with, with a necromancer. Like he was brilliant, and um, it was amazing to see Sauron making his first chronological appearance in his armour. It, it was really brilliant seeing him like that, you know, in the Hobbit trilogy. You know, his, his first appearance in you know the movies in order, you know, of them coming out because this, of course, takes place before Fellowship of the Ring. It was great to see Sauron wearing, and I like how he had fire. He was covered in fire. It was really good. Very nicely done. It was it was a brilliant scene. Um, and another thing as well that I do also like is that um, I do like how compared to the other second installments of the series, which which was the two towers in Lord of the Rings, that Gandalf had slightly more screen time. I was happy about that because I was worried he wouldn't have much screen time due to him leaving, you know, the dwarves. But luckily, they gave him plenty of screen time when he was away from them, which I was happy about because you know. Because I love Sue McKellen in a role, I want to see as much of them as possible. Now, um, with regards to the extended edition, um, you know, there are, you know, some things that, uh, you know, I do uh, enjoy about it. And there's probably one thing that I don't really like. Um, for example, my favourite thing about the extended edition is that um, I do like how it includes um, Thorin's dad, um, Frayne, at Dol Guldor. I like that because um, they expand on, you know, Gandalf and Thorin's conversation in, uh, in Brie. Wherefore I mentions that, you know, he thinks his father's still alive. And Gandalf, of course, later finds Frayn imprisoned in Dol Guldor. But sadly, however, when they're trying to escape from Azog and the Orcs, um, Frayn is killed by a necromancer, sadly. Um, so, unfortunately, Thorin never got to reunite with his dad, sadly. Shame, isn't it? And another thing as well, that what, there's probably one scene in Extended Edition that I just can't take, which is... Um, the scene they added where the Master of Lake Town's eating his food because, oh, God. 
I don't know about you guys, but that scene was disgusting for me personally. It was it was gross. Like I don't know what they were thinking adding that scene into extended edition. Really, we should have cut it out because it was it was just unnecessary and pretty disgusting. Ugh. And another issue that I do also have is that um, I kind of wish that we got to see you know Owen and Saruman again. You know, as part of a white council, I was hoping we'd see them again because because Gandalf tells Radicus has to go and meet Galadriel after she, of course, instructed Gandalf to go to a high fells so he could, you know, let them know. Um, but sadly, we, ne we never saw that. Like, and I loved if we got to see, like, a brief cameo by them. Um, but but luckily, they do show up in the third film. Um, but, yeah, I just wish we saw them again because, you know... I mean, this is probably, like, this is the first, you know, and only movie about Peter Jackson of a Tolkien franchise in which Hugo Weaving did not appear, sadly. And if you were to count the extended edition of Return of the King, this is the first one in which Sir Christopher Lee does not appear as well. Um, but anyway, guys, so um, so if you if you wonder why I give this out of 10, um, just like I, I give it in, you know, my review that I did, um, that I did last year, I still to stay give it 8 out of 10 because I think it's underappreciated and, and deserves much more love because, you know, I really enjoy it. I mean, sure, I've got issues which is why I prefer the first Hobbit movie, but still, you know, it's very enjoyable and, you know... And you know, another thing as well is that um, the cliffhanger at the end, um, I was kind of just disappointed that they left it as a cliffhanger, really. Like, I was hoping we'd get to expand on it a bit and have, like, a much better ending in a way, but at least it kind of got me excited for the final instalment of the trilogy, I guess. But still, it was a bit disappointing how, you know, uh, they didn't really, how it ended so anti-climatic like that, really. But all in all, um, this is a very enjoyable movie, and 8 out of 10 is what I give it, yeah. So, guys, uh, this is me reviewing The, Lo um, the Hobbit, uh, The Desolation of Small from 2013. So, you know, a drill, guys. Um, be sure to give this video a like. Also, be sure to leave in the comments uh, what you guys thought of, of uh, this installment of The Hobbit trilogy by Peter Jackson. Love to hear what your thoughts are. Also, be sure to join Team Prime by pressing subscribe for more of this coming future, and fly, you fools!